When I did my travel PC a few weeks back, I made a mistake in that I busted the heat pipes when I was sawing that cooler to fit in my SG-13B Silverstone Mini ITX case. Though, it brought about a lingering question. Can you fix heat pipes on a budget? If not, then what else can you do to fix this problem? Let's take a look. When I bought the cheapest GTX 1070 I could find, I ran into one problem. The cooler wasn't clearing the front of the case. And instead of hacking up the case, which wasn't an option since I had to clear customs a further four times with it, I decided to make the cooler fit instead, since it overextended the stock GTX 1070 PCB size. Though after I did this, the card was thermal throttling, and this was a problem since you won't be getting the performance you paid for, especially on a GTX 1070. However, now that I'm back with my tools and the like, I decided to fill the heat pipes with initially hydrocarbon and then quickly seal it. This initial experiment failed and the card was still hitting the thermal throttle limit quite quickly. I did a second round, but this time oil in the pipes. Same result, the two heat pipes on this card were just not coming back to life. Not to worry though, no harm was done to the PCB, which is the most important part of a graphics card. And seriously, never attempt to mod a PCB unless you know what you're doing and have experience with doing such things. So heat pipes, they can't be fixed with your typical ghetto hack methods. Though, let's try putting a $5 Sith cooler that I found in a junk bin in Japan over six months ago on this little bad boy. Powers. 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 So there we have it, $6 in total for this solution. It also happens to fit in my Mini ITX rig. When I put it in the Mini ITX rig, the temps were a bit higher, though even with overclocking, I was hitting around max 70 degrees. And on that note, this was the best overclocks I've seen on a GTX 1070 on air thus far. So it speaks lengths for how good some of these aftermarket cooling solutions are, especially when you compare it to a Gigabyte cooler with only two heat pipes on there, or two busted heat pipes. Though I know what you're thinking, not everyone has access to the $5 coolers in a junk bin for some boutique store in Japan. So for this other solution, I'm going to mount an Arctic S1 Plus Goofy style on this graphics card and also use these old fans from that Gigabyte heatsink and then throw it in the bin and see what we can do. How is it? How is it? So after putting this Arctic cooler through its paces, it did go over 60 degrees there, so performing a little bit worse than the Sith cooler and also being a lot larger. So with that note, I decided to stick with the Sith cooler and then put on some VRM and MOSFET heat sinks, so it's going to be a permanent solution in the Mini ITX rig. So there we have it. If you break heat pipes, there's generally no coming back from it. That is, the cooler is screwed. Unless you have some really specialized gear, which is beyond the scope of this channel and myself. It is also generally why older laptops have lots of problems, because they work predominantly off heat pipes. And if those heat pipes even have a minuscule amount of degradation, then the cooling will be severely affected. In my case, the card was only thermal throttling, and in easy to play games like Dota 2, it was having no problems whatsoever. Nothing to really worry about because this was only a band-aid solution until I got back here. Though on that note of modding and heat pipes, the only time you really have to worry is if your card is thermal tripping. If this happens, you have to double check everything to make sure your cooler is working properly. For example, the fans are working, the case is not suffocated, and the cooler is making proper contact with the graphics card or CPU, as that is what can cause permanent damage to your gear. And lastly, I'm also sorry if I offended anyone on the PC Master Race forum. The last thing I'd want to do is rub fellow PC gamers up the wrong way. And there's also a lot of good people on there who are very knowledgeable. So I'm again, I'm sorry about the mistakes that I made. I also learned in the process too that heat pipes differ greatly depending on the company. Apparently having Ace Tone pressurized in the pipes is best for thermal conductivity on PC parts. Interesting, perhaps it explains why Arctic's bigger coolers are so damn good. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below, have you done any crazy experiments on CPUs or GPUs before? We'd love to hear your comments as always, and I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Hey, what are you up to tonight?
Ah, oh, nothing much, mate. Just busting some heat pipes. Work, 